and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this dog. What is important about this painting is that I am painting the light rather than the dog. So before I start talking about the technical elements of this painting, I just wanted to say a few words about how I approached this painting. What made this reference photo so lovely is the light. And so this is what I have concentrated on trying to get right. Not painting every strand of hair or every detail. I need to focus specifically on the contrast as that is what will give this painting a sense of atmosphere. That is why I called the subject matter of this video paint the light and not the object because that is what I'm trying to do here. So today I thought I would show you the whole painting for this dog. It won't be a time lapse video, but it will be edited to shorten it down. I have split the video into two parts. The first part is layers one and two, and part two next week will be layers three and four. As I only have one camera focused on my actual painting methods, I will tell you now about the palette that I used for this painting. So the colours I used in this painting are cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light, cadmium red, ultramarine deep, ivory black and zinc titanium white. I am using my black very sparingly. I am finding the majority of my colours in my neutrals. This painting is based around the complementary colours of blue and orange and purple and yellow. When you mix complementaries together, you will get their neutral. So for example, here I am mixing orange made up of yellow ochre light and cadmium red and also ultramarine deep together. Look at what happens to the colour when you mix them together. You get a neutral. And it is in these neutrals that I want to do the majority of my painting. Adding white to this neutral will change the colour again into more of a grey. So for my purples, I am mixing together cadmium red and ultramarine deep. To make my neutral, I then have the option of using either cadmium yellow or yellow ochre light. And the colour will be quite different depending upon which one I use. And it will be different again if I add white. For my oranges, I have the choice of either cadmium yellow plus cadmium red or yellow ochre light plus cadmium red. I am mixing these oranges into my blues to get my neutrals. Again, I will get a very different colour depending upon which yellow I use and it will change again if I add white. For my darkest colours in the background and the dog's eye, I am adding black to my purple, but this is the only instance that I will use my black. It is very important that you add colour to your black and you don't use it on its own. Because I want my areas of highest contrast to carry colour. So for example here, my lightest areas still carry some yellow and my darkest areas carry purple. And when you put purple and yellow together, they look great. And I get maximum contrast because I have my highest areas of light and dark in terms of value together. But also I have maximum colour contrast too by placing yellow next to purple. If you are not familiar with painting in neutrals, check out this video on my channel called How to Mix Neutrals for More Realistic Painting, Colour Theory in Oil Painting. So now as I've talked about the colours that I'm using, I thought we could get on to watch the video of me painting this rather lovely silk and wine town. I will try and tell you throughout the video what I am doing. However, it is quite hard to talk non-stop for 20 minutes. So if it goes quiet, it is not an issue with your volume. I'm just not talking. I cover my canvas to start with in a wash of raw sienna and mineral spirits. I just like to have my canvases toned before I start. And this is the colour that I like. 
So my process is, I guess you would call it direct painting. It's a bit of a hash between painting in layers and a la prima. In this video, I will show you the first part, which is layers one and two. Layer three and four will be next week. Layers one and two is relatively quick. Layers three and four is where all the work is done. And so that video will be much longer. I am using a large flat brush to just lay my paint very loosely. I'm trying to get a sense of the dog and establish my values. I'm not worrying too much about getting it correct to start with. I just need a starting point from which I can allow the painting to develop. The brush that I am using is by Rosemary & Co. It is a long haired coma and it has slightly serrated edges and so it gives me a very soft effect and allows me to swish the paint around. I know at this stage that my darks are not dark enough, but as I am thinning my paint with the mineral spirits, it's not possible to go in with really dark colours. You might wonder why I just don't go straight in with my colours. I like to use my first couple of layers to try to figure out my colour harmonies, and it makes it easier to do this when I haven't committed to thick paint. It allows me to figure out what colours will work together while still keeping my painting looking fresh.
I have labelled the two separate layers on this video so that you can see where one finishes and the other one begins. I will allow each layer to dry overnight before attempting the next one. As I said in my introduction to this video, one of the important aspects of this painting is the contrast between the light hitting the dog and the dark background. For that background, I am mixing my Cad Red and also my Ultramarine Deep. I'm adding a tiny bit of black as well. It's really important that you resist the temptation to just go straight in with that black. We want to have colour in our darks and remember there is no colour in black. There is also no colour in white. So if I put black and white together, I won't get the same effect as if I put a really dark purple, which leans more on the blue side of purple and white that leans more on the yellow side of white together. I am using quite a limited palette to paint this picture. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can use more colours if you're comfortable with lots of colours on your palette. But if you do this, my advice would be to group them into colours. For example, having all your yellows together, all your reds together and all your blues together. And then within each group, 
group your cool yellows together and your warm yellows together, your cool reds together and your warm reds together, etc. I prefer to mix more from less, but if you prefer to mix less from more, that is still fine. I am allowing a lot of that raw sienna to show through for the dog. I am really only adding the very obvious areas of value change at this stage. The raw sienna can be left pretty much alone. It's more important that I establish the mood of this painting first and block in my major dark areas and my light areas. I am not concerning myself with really any detail at all because this won't help me establish a mood. I am going for high contrast on this painting. Such a method is actually called tenebrism. Tenebrism is a painting style which uses strong contrast between light and dark to create drama and emotion and this is what is going to give me the atmosphere that I want in my painting. It's not the detail. It's not painting every hair individually. It is simply the contrast between light and dark. And it's not just placing light against dark, which will be enough to create the effect I want. Placing two complementary colours together, that is purple next to yellow, will also help give me that sense of contrast and drama and emotion. If you're interested, Tenebrism comes from the Italian word meaning dark or gloomy and it is a style of painting that was originally made famous by the painter Caravaggio in the 16th century.
So I am just continually going over the painting very lightly with more paint to darken that background. I am still thinning my paints with the mineral spirits, but each layer that I add, I just use a little less mineral spirits. Where I have a sense of light coming in from the right hand side, that is a mixture of purple plus white plus quite a bit of yellow ochre light. I am not limiting myself to just purple, but I am adding my yellow to give me my neutrals in my background because I have that light source to contend with. And remember, where we have light, we want to add yellows to our purples. Where we have less light, we can use more of our purples. And within my purple, I also have the option of having a warm purple or having a blue purple. So I would have a warm purple where there is more light. I would have a cool purple where there is less light. For my light source, I am adding much more yellow to my purple. Yellow ochre light on its own is enough to lighten my purple. Remember, if I add white, I will take out colour. And so where you add white, you also have to add chroma.
As I move on to my layer two, I start to add the values in the dog. Again, I am being very loose with my painting. I am just blocking in the broad values that I think I am seeing. I am also trying to establish my temperature shifts. By using complementary colours, I am making it easier for myself. Painting in colour is hard because you have three things that you have to contend with. These are chroma, how saturated is it? I also have to consider value, how light and dark is it? Finally, I have to consider temperature, is it warm or is it cool? That is why I think dealing with painting in colour is so hard, but I think working in complementary colours makes it easier. This is because colour opposites only give you a choice between warm and cool. Paint straight out of the tube is at its most saturated point. So if I mix my two colour opposites together, it desaturates my paint. Where I have mixed 50% of each together, the paint is at its most desaturated point. So that sorts out my saturation issues. That leads me to figure out my value. So here I can add white to lighten my colour or I can add maybe a very dark purple to darken it. That is why I like working with a limited palette and complementary colours because I think it simplifies the process. However, I appreciate that it puts a lot of emphasis onto mixing the colours yourself so it is not for everyone but it is a process that is worth trying if you can and the way that I use to paint this picture. So as you can see, we're pretty much done with layers one and two, and I am just going to show you a photo of both layers so that you can see them a little bit more clearly. I will show you layers three and four next week, so please tune in then too. I hope you have found this video useful, Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhalladayart.com 
where you will find examples of my work and details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.